Okay, let me uh, make a correction to something I posted in my video last night regarding the timing of this engine. The method I used to time it as far as holding the timing gear in place and everything was the correct means to do it, but I had the engine mistimed. Now let me show you how now that I've got it properly timed. Okay, so what I should have done, and let's just pretend for a moment that these timing gears, timing cases aren't on here. We'll start with one. I have the timing locked in place. I'm putting, I've got my crank pin at top dead center on cylinder one. Pretend like these two, two and three cylinder timing gears aren't in place. So I'm holding this top dead center. I put this thing on, I put a couple screws on. Now for me to go in time, the number three cylinder, what I would do is this. Rotate crank pin past two to three. Top dead center at three. And then I would put my timing gear assembly on like that. Not rotating it one and three quarter turns like I was doing before. Just that one. So this is three now. This is one. So now if I want to time two, then I would go after I've got this one in place, I go past one and then stop at two. And then I would insert my timing gear in here. Okay, so now I can put my connecting rod assembly in place. I've got cylinder one here, cylinder one, the beveled side goes down. Now if you notice also on these, the way they're assembled, each one has a dot. That dot faces forward towards the propeller. So all I have to do here is, number one, just slide this in. Spread those legs out a little bit. Move this down a little bit. And it just slides okay, in place. Okay, so you may see that I've got the back plate off yet again. So I also determined, which is good for you folks out there that might be working on these engines in the future, not so good for me that's doing it for the first time, that you can actually pull this back plate off with the intake manifolds and maybe that's the best way to install these on the engine as opposed to fighting it like I was doing. Now the reason I had to do this again was when I was installing cylinder number three, the damn Teflon piston pin retainer fell off into the engine again meaning that I had to take the back plate off and go find that thing so let's try just doing it like this with the back plate off so that if that happens again which I hopefully it won't I'll at least be able to see it more readily and not have to get so irritated These little things, retainers, are very slippery. Very slippery. So now the kicker is I'm taking that intake manifold off of here. Put that O ring. Go ahead and put the O ring in the head for that or the ceiling ring there. Now, let's try and do this hopefully for the last time. Okay, so I'm over those pins. Now all I have to mess with is my push rod. So this looks to be the easiest means to do this. I'm not screwing with this connection here and getting it aligned. It's just a matter of putting this straight on. So that's what we needed to do. Grounding lugs in place. O-ring, O-ring, O-ring. Now I'm going to need my jig again here. Let's see here. Where is number one? Number one here. Number one is facing away from me. Put this in place here. Now, this denotes, this dot here denotes the top. I just get one little lip going in each of them. that now, 
why isn't it going all the way down? because I think the length of some of these videos might be kind of long because I think it's going to be important that I show mistakes in addition to triumphs and with that I could end up making these pretty long videos so those of you truly interested in seeing how this is done or how many ways I can screw something up are going to be stuck watching a pretty long video.